Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at some oil coolers. Here I have the early and late housing and I'll be showing you the differences between these. I also have the cooler itself in which I'll be showing you how to shim. And here we have all the different OPRVs that were used over the years. And finally, this is the seal kit that I'll be using. Everything that you're going to see is going to be straight from the workshop manual. So let's get started. So alright guys, for the most part I'm going to be reading straight from this tech bulletin here. The first thing it discusses is the OPRV valves and has the dates manufactured. Now, if we start reading below it, it reads, From the start of production, 1983, 944 cars came equipped with a spring and piston oil pressure relief valve, which is this right here. And it says, This was used in all 944 and 944 turbos up until the end of 1986 production. Okay. It says, Also, early 1987 924S's used this system. So, now we know that all cars up until 1986 used this and including the 1987 924s for a certain period of time and in 1987 production of 944 944 s's 944 turbo a new type of one piece oil pressure relief valve was installed which is this one here at <laughs> it says at around the same time that twist your tongue at around the same time a new type of one piece pressure relief valve was introduced as a retrofit which is this one here so basically this one here replaced the spring and piston so all right on the next page it's showing you how to replace the o-ring and the ceiling ring these must be changed every time you pull the OPRV out and here's a closer look. You can see that this one has an old ring on it that I have not replaced yet. I actually have the seal here. And I have a late OPRV already taken apart here. And you can see that there are actually two sealing rings on there. One goes on one end there, and the other one goes on the other end. So I always try to replace both of them. And this is what it should look like when you have a new ring. So on this side of the page, it's showing you that there is a steel sleeve or collar in the early blocks that cannot be removed. And you must put it back in with Loctite 648 or 638. So now we are getting into all the things that are included in the kit and the differences in the housing. So, so alright guys, I've got my gasket here and I've got my packet of seals. Now, as you can see, there are two metal shims and a plastic spacer in there. That means that this is for the late housing only. Now, it is important to know the differences between the early and late housings. If you read this paragraph here, it says, when repairing the earlier cars, the new type of housing, plastic washer, and adjusting shims must be used. That means if you have an earlier housing, it cannot be used. And here it has a figure a is the early car or original design and B is the new design. Now, if you don't know the difference and you can't really see anything from that anyway, here is the early housing. You can see that there is a lip there. And if I put my caliper down in there, you can see that it's raised up about a millimeter or so. And that is the early housing and if you come over to the late housing you can see that it's completely flat there's nothing there whatsoever so you're supposed to replace the early housings with the late housings and then use the plastic spacer and the two shims all right guys here's the contents of that seal pack you can see that comes with a black rubber ring, two metal shims, plastic spacer, 
and the two oil cooler rings. Now we're going to start putting everything back together. There are two seals on either side of the oil cooler and they will need to be replaced. You just need to get up underneath them with a tool like this and they will come right off. Now you just take your new seals and put them on. So all right guys, in order to do this job properly, I'm not gonna be reusing this early housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it out of the way. The first thing we're going to put in is this plastic spacer. Now, if you'll remember, the little lip that's inside the early housing is about one millimeter, and this here looks to be about 1.79 of a millimeter. So this little plastic spacer is just barely taller than the lip in the uh, early housings. But we're going to take that and we're going to push it right on to the oil cooler just like that. And this is going to be the side that's going to sit in the housing like that. Now what you want to do is you want to take a little bit of oil and rub it around the seal here to make sure that you don't have any binding and this doesn't twist because if it rolls or twists then have a big problem on your hands so, all right it just popped in and there we go so now that I have the heat exchanger in the housing I'm going to show you how to install the shims the first thing you're going to need is a feeler gauge set to 0.25 millimeters and a straight edge of any kind and what you want to do is you don't want the gasket on here or any shims on there yet. You just want to lay your straight edge across the shoulder of that boss there and if I can get this to focus then you would see that perhaps there is a little space between that there and I'm gonna go ahead and put a shim on and that looks to be perfect right there now if it wasn't touching you'll want to take your feeler gauge and see if you're within this spec here now if I take this shim off again you will see that even without any sort of shims I'm within range, but I think one shim makes it perfect. Now we can try two shims, but it looks like that side right here is just barely not touching because it's coming across that shim too high. So. I think we'll be good you can see there like I try and push it down and it's not wanting that top shim on there so put that back perfect fit right there just one shim works so that's what I'm gonna go with on this cooler and then you have your little black rubber ring here and the best way to install this is to take this and put some grease on it and then put it on the block and uh, when you go to install your oil cooler then it'll go in just like that if you can see so yeah put some grease on this and then put the, the oil cooler housing on just like that and then leave your bolts loose put your alignment tool in and then tighten your four bolts down and then you can remove it and what I always do is move my arm so I can get a little bit more lighting 
I always, if you have the right alignment, you will be able to put your OPRV in, even with a new seal, all the way. So I just keep turning it by hand with it in the block. If it is correctly aligned, you will be able to just keep turning this until it goes all the way in and then you can lock it down. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helps you the next time you go to install your old cooler housing. And uh, I'm going to wrap this video up with some footage of the differences between the blocks that you will find between the early and late cars. So until next time, guys. So here we have an early block and you can see the steel sleeve that is referred to in the factory workshop manual. You will need a special tool to align the housings on the early blocks with this sleeve. And you can see here how the early one piece seals against that sleeve and you can only use either the early three piece or the early one piece with these blocks. The later OPRV will not work because the threads are longer and you will end up just bottoming out here before it even gets threaded in and it's not going to work anyway because this piston isn't sealing inside the sleeve as it should to relieve pressure so it will not work and now we'll go on to a later block and show you the differences there so here you can see a later block and it does not have the steel sleeve the OPRV on the later cars actually go in until the seal pops in place and that's how it rests now if you were to take an early OPRV and slide it in there. It's not going to reach because the steel sleeve comes out to about right there.